Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm working on a 2014 Audi A4. I think it's an A4, might be an A6. But two liter turbo, I don't know the engine code off the top of my head. Customer complaint, rough idle and the low oil pressure light came on. He said he checked the oil, added a little bit. Um, it's probably over full now because they've never had an issue with it using oil before. So I already went ahead and hooked up my WPS um, pressure transducer to the oil pressure sensor port. Now this has two ports. They are right on top of each other. Um, the blue one, and I think the top one was a brown one. Now, according to the computer system, the top one was a reduced oil pressure switch. So that's the one that the instructions on the service information said to remove for the oil pressure test. So that's what I did. I'm not sure if one is pre-filter and post-filter, if they're both on the same oil passage or what the deal is there. My guess would be that, you know, they have two different ratings. One is used like when you're going on the highway and one is used at idle possibly. Um, but regardless, I pulled the top one out, hooked up my WPS 500 and hook that up to the Pico scope so we can watch it. I don't like using a regular mechanical gauge on these because if the oil pressure is low, I wanna see how low it is. Um, and I don't, most mechanical gauges below 10, you can't really see. Um, <laughs> so I prefer the electronic one. Plus I can print it out. I can save that information, print it out for the customer. So let's go ahead and start it up and see how much oil pressure we have. Now I'm going to wait for the RPM to come back down to an idle and stabilize. Um, there's a train getting ready to go by, so it'll give me a second to, uh, to get past that. Now I do have a warning light on. So a service do the oil pressure lights on. Well, the oil pressure light is on because I have that sensor unplugged. It's saying, Hey dummy, uh, we have a problem. You have no oil pressure. Now, one thing that he did that on purpose. One thing that surprises me is that Volkswagen and Audi still don't use an oil pressure sensor. I mean, they've been using the oil pressure switches forever. And the fact that they had to put two switches on this one to determine um, at idle and higher RPM, I'm assuming that's the reason. I'm just guessing though. It could be pre-filter, post-filter. But since they're using different, different pressure values, I'm guessing that it's something else. But the fact that they're still using a switch is kind of odd to me. If they went to a sensor, they could tell exactly what the oil pressure is. You could hook it up to a scanner um, and see what's going on there. So our RPMs have stabilized. Let's jump out, look at the Pico scope. I already have it set up. I also have an ignition sink and I have a math channel so we can see what RPM we're at. Okay, so no, it doesn't look like I'm looking at you because I'm looking at the screen, but I have our blue trace is oil pressure and we are on a negative 21 to positive 50 PSI scale. The red is my ignition sink. The black is a math channel. Um, I just used the crank feature and I only put that it has one pulse on the trigger wheel. Still getting used to the Pico scope seven. And then I, I thought I multiplied it by, oh, I changed the name wrong. I multiplied it by two because I only have one crank trigger for every two rotations of the engine. We're not gonna fire the spark plug on the exhaust stroke in this engine because it's a coil on plug setup. It's not a waste fire setup. So change that name. Oops. So my RPMs are changing slightly. So we'll just have to deal with that. Now I can put some cursors on here to see kind of the approximate oil pressure that we have. And we are at 10 PSI. Now that's not great because our service information, I believe our specs are with the vehicle idling 17 to 29 PSI. Now it doesn't say what RPM we should be idling at. It just says at idle. Um, I think we're idling a little faster than we should be, which is part of the problem. But even idling fast, we're at 950 RPM probably. And push the I would say we're averaging 950 RPM, which this should be idling around 750 
700 and we still have low oil pressure. So we have 10.81 PSI approximately while this thing's idling at 950 RPM. Our spec was 17. We have a long ways to go before we reach the spec. Now I understand that it says services due. So our oil could be thinned out. If our oil is thinned out, um, that could contribute to it a little bit. I had to warm it all the way up to get the oil pressure to drop this low. But I think we have a different issue. I think we should focus on the fast idle and the rough running before we focus on the oil pressure. Because I have a theory of what's going on here. And actually when this vehicle came in, before I even hooked the gauge up, I tackled the fast idle and rough idle situation first. And that's what got me thinking about the oil pressure and how it relates to this other system. So let me show you what's going on with the fast idle and the rough idle. Uh, I know the cooling fans are ramping up behind us. It's probably gonna get a little noisy, but we'll just work through it. Um, the vehicle is obviously fully warmed up since the fans are kicking on. So our oil pressure shouldn't drop much lower than that. So anybody that's familiar with Volkswagen and Audi engines may have run across this in the past. And what it is, is the crankcase vacuum regulation system, which is this big diaphragm built in to the valve cover. Now you might be able to hear a hiss through the camera here. If I stick my finger over this port, we have a vacuum leak there. Check engine lights on, we have a lean running code. Um, but could this have an effect on our oil pressure? Well, why would a vacuum leak have an effect on oil pressure? Let's think about that for a second. Should it? Well, it shouldn't, but because of the way this system is, we may be having a huge, even though we have a small vacuum leak here, we might have a huge vacuum leak into the crankcase. So the easiest way to test on that is if the Volkswagen or Audi has a dipstick or dipstick tube, this one doesn't have a stick, it just has a tube, is pull that out and we're gonna measure vacuum at that port. Now, any of these Volkswagens, whenever you create a leak like this, they are gonna start running rough. Whether you do it like that, or if you pull the oil cap, they are going to start running terribly, make all kinds of noise. Idle's gonna start surging up and down. But in order to find out how much vacuum we have in the crankcase, because we should have some, we need to stick a vacuum gauge, um, that's what I normally do, into this dipstick tube. So we have the vacuum gauge, just gonna plug it in there. And holy cow, we are building vacuum. So 10 inches of vacuum in the crankcase. Now if this valve was good, we'll have less than one, one inch of vacuum, um, typically. Just trying to block the light here. I rarely stick anything more sensitive than this gauge into that port. I just throw this vacuum gauge on there. If it goes more than one, um, then I know that that valve is faulty. Typically it's less than one, but I did have one earlier today that was at one and this port was still leaking vacuum. So we have 10 inches of vacuum in the crankcase. Can that cause low oil pressure? Is that going to make it harder for the oil pump to pick up the oil? And here's where <laughs> my dad told me, well, that's why you have low oil pressure. But I wanted to know why. Why is that gonna cause low oil pressure? Is it because the suction in there makes it harder for the oil to pump? Because if I have vacuum in the crankcase, wouldn't I have not only vacuum on the bottom of the oil pickup tube, sucking oil out, making it harder to go in, but don't I have the same vacuum on the crankcase or on the uh, crankshaft, trying to pull oil out of the crankshaft and through the journals? My theory is, even though I have vacuum on the inside of the crankcase, it's not gonna affect my internal oil pressures. It's not gonna affect my oil flow characteristics. All of that should be the same because the oil pressure system internal of the engine does not reference outside air. The only thing that's referencing the outside air is the oil pressure switch. So I can't make, and this is, this is all just a theory. This is a theory I have is the oil pressure switch and my WPS 500 
is comparing the pressure at the oil pressure port where I'm tight in, comparing that pressure to my ambient air pressure at my altitude. So the outside air pressure, it's a, it's a difference between this pressure and the oil pressure. So it's a relative sensor. Um, it's comparing the two relative to each other. But if I have a vacuum on the, on the crankcase, wouldn't my oil pressure relative to the crankcase pressure be the same regardless of what I'm measuring with my sensor? So how can we prove that? Well, I could mount a oil pressure sensor on the inside of the crankcase and run a wire to it, but that's gonna be really difficult and there's no ports in there and I'd have to run wires out. Or we could unhook my gauge and open up the vacuum leak and see if the oil pressure instantly jumps up. That'll tell us that we have more oil pressure now. We could do a little bit of math and the 10 inches of vacuum I have is around, what's that, negative five PSI. Um, it's normally half as much PSI and we're on the negative side of it. So if I can keep the same RPM with the vacuum gauge unhooked, should I jump up five PSI of oil pressure? Now that still doesn't get me to the minimum of 17, but it gets me a lot closer. So let's unhook the vacuum gauge and see what our oil pressure does. Let's give it a second. Okay, so this is where it's really tough because now that I've opened up that vacuum leak, the engine's loping, um, it's having kind of a hard time. It can't really figure out what's going on. Now it's possible that I could unhook the mass airflow sensor, put it into a limp mode, maybe the idle would stabilize. Um, but let me see what RPM we're at now. and what our oil pressure is now. I'm just gonna go based off of an average. So we are at 12 and a half PSI and we dropped down to 734 RPM. So we're 200 RPM lower, but yet we still went up on oil pressure. So I think that if this thing was actually idling stable and even with a fresh oil change because it is due for service, I think that our oil pressure is going to be very close to the spec that I need. Plugging off that vacuum leak, the RPMs are gonna increase until it stabilizes, but it is building more and more vacuum. Even though our RPM is going up slightly, it's building vacuum. So we can see that on the screen as that pressure drops down and then kind of stabilizes. Now, if I plug that little port on the vacuum regulator, I'm gonna build even more vacuum in the crankcase. And I don't know if that'll bring my RPM down, if the RPM stays the same, but we build more vacuum and we can calculate that, then that might give us an answer as well. So I'm about 10 inches of vacuum right now. And I don't want to blow the seals out, but plugging the port, our RPM has dropped a little bit and we are down to 12 and a half inches of vacuum. And we can see that my oil pressure dropped drastically. But now that our RPMs have dropped, we are much closer to that lower RPM we were at when the vehicle was kind of loping. So if we compare this pressure, let me let it stabilize one screen, it'll stabilize. If we compare this value to the value when I give it the large vacuum leak in the crankcase, if our RPMs are the same, then we can use those two pressures to calculate our difference. Because we are still about negative 12 and a half inches so we'll just, we'll round down and we'll say negative six PSI. If I jump up approximately six PSI of oil pressure when I release the vacuum in the crankcase, then I think my theory is correct. And it's just a pressure differential. Okay, so I stopped the screen capture. Let me shut the car off so you guys can hear me a little better. Okay, we're still gonna have the cooling fans running behind me, but let's talk about what we're seeing on the screen. So right down here is where I had the, the port sealed off. We had, neg we had 12 and a half inches of vacuum. So 6.25 PSI, negative 6.2 PSI of pressure in the crankcase. When I let it off, yeah, the RPM was jumping around and it's loping. If we try to get somewhere in the middle of that pressure, um, 
keep in mind, this is our RPM down here in the black. And now that I stopped the capture, this is an actual representation of what the RPM was. Our RPM didn't change very much at all, but we jumped up to 12.8 PSI with the loping engine at the same RPM with no vacuum in the crankcase or probably minimal. If I pulled the, the valve cover cap off, it'd probably have a little less, but eight and a half P or not eight and a half. We have six and a half PSI difference between high vacuum in the crankcase and no vacuum in the crankcase. So this is kind of one of those reminders of if a vehicle comes in and the customer's complaining about low oil pressure, then maybe we have perfectly okay oil pressure, but maybe we have high vacuum in the crankcase skewing our results because the oil pressure switch is a delta sensor. It's going to be comparing outside or a relative sensor. It's gonna be comparing outside pressure to inside pressure. It doesn't know the engine's on a vacuum. We're still gonna have adequate lubrication inside the engine, I believe. We just don't have a accurate reading from the oil pressure sensor or oil pressure switch. So I ordered a new PCV valve oil separator vacuum regulator assembly. Um, it's that plastic deal bolted to the valve cover. I don't know the official name. It seems like it changes throughout the years, but the piece that's causing our issues, I ordered a new one from Audi. I won't have it until next week, but I'm gonna leave my oil pressure sensor hooked up or my switch fitting in there. I can easily hook my WPS back up once I get it done. We'll change the oil, I'll go out and get it hot um, or let it run for a while, get it hot. Check the oil pressure again, see what's going on. I won't have the weird loping issue um, so we can get an accurate measurement because even if I'm a, like a negative or if I'm like one inch of vacuum, that's only half a PSI. Um, so that's gonna be a very negligible difference in the oil pressure inside the engine compared to the at atmospheric pressure. So once I get all that stuff on there, we'll double check it, make sure everything is good to go. And I'm sure we won't have any issues. We'll clear the code, clear the lean running code, probably uh, maybe some misfire codes. I'm not exactly sure. Um, the light was actually off when I initially pulled it in, but with me doing all the stuff I was doing, the light popped on. I'm sure it was a lean running because I had the, uh, the cap out of the dipstick for, for several minutes at one point. So if you guys have a different theory, put it down below. I wanna see what you guys think is causing the oil pressure to drop when a vehicle has high vacuum in the crankcase. Some of you guys are way smarter than I am and way more creative with ideas. Um, that's just something that popped into my head is the vacuum is not actually dropping the oil pressure inside the engine or making it harder for that oil pump to work. It's just a pressure differential from the outside to the inside. That's all we're seeing. Um, so let me know your theories. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, I got a little bonus footage for you guys. I figured out a way to get by without two WPS pressure transducers. I have a 100 PSI snap-on pressure transducer there. Plugged into my Zeus just as a power supply. Um, I looked on there just to see what some of the scaling was. Um, I don't have a custom probe loaded for it, so I had to make one. It's at half a volt at zero PSI. I checked the crankcase vacuum um, just with my gauge. It was at negative, or it was at 10 inches of vacuum, negative five PSI, and that was at 0.3 volts on the snap-on pressure transducer. I plugged the port, we had negative 12 and a half inches of vacuum, so 6.25 PSI negative, and that was at point, I wrote it down, uh, 2.44, or 0.244. So I just built a quick custom probe off of that. I had to go back to PicoScope 6. I don't know how to do it in 7. Um, I'm faster with 6 anyways. So this is what we have. I have the green trace is the snap-on pressure transducer with a filter activated because it's picking up all kinds of noise. And then I made, I still have my RPM channel down here. And then I made a math channel of my oil pressure minus the snap-on pressure transducer, which is in the crankcase. Since I have negative pressure in there, it's a negative PSI scale. Minus minus equals a plus. So it's my oil pressure plus whatever my pressure reading was in the crankcase. I hope that made sense. It shows us exactly what I thought it was going to. And we are at 15.5 PSI right now. Let me plug off that little port 
and we know that we went like we, we dropped some oil pressure but we gained some vacuum let's see if the oil pressure changes Our RPMs went down and our oil pressure dropped a little bit, our calculated oil pressure. Our relative oil pressure compared to the outside air pressure dropped a lot. So let me grab another cursor. So we are at 6.9 PSI of relative oil pressure, atmosphere relative to the oil pressure at the test port. But my calculated oil pressure of what the oil pressure actually is on the inside of the engine is still let's see what this is 12.7 psi now this engine is really hot but let me remove the oil cap it's going to run like crap their rpm is going to be jumping around let's see what our calculated oil pressure is let's see how much it changes Whew. Oh, and we are all over the place. Oh, that's because my uh, <laughs> pressure transducer is in the dipstick. And it is freaking out. And I'm getting below my scaling. Okay. Um, from what I could gather on those sensors, most of them cap out at 4.5 volts at whatever the sensor rating is. It's a 100 PSI sensor, so I set my scaling to 4.5 volts at 100 PSI just to give me that upper end of the spectrum. I don't know if that's the actual pressure, so this may be a deviation slightly, but we can see from the screen that I am still averaging about the same calculated oil pressure as what I had before. Now, I still have a little bit of vacuum. It actually sucked the oil cap down, even though I have the dipstick tube unblocked. So I'm gonna pop that cap off. It's probably gonna get a little more unstable. And eh, about the same. But even then, I still had some vacuum in the crankcase. Now, I'm going to put the cap back on, stick the sensor back in there, see if our calculations are still the same. Wait for it to smooth out. Walking off that port once again to build our maximum crankcase vacuum. And we are right there back at that 12.76 PSI of oil pressure. Okay, thought you guys would like to see the calculation. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know if my custom probe is right, but that gives us a confirmation of my math that I was doing in my head earlier. Thanks for watching, see you next time.